In today's video, we're gonna be maintaining one of my aquariums. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Naquascape. If you're new to the channel, then subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on weekly content to do with building new aquascapes using different materials and different styles and also doing unboxings and reviews of products related to aquascaping and the planted aquarium. So this is the 45 centimeter superfish aquascaping aquarium. As you can see that Rotala runidifolia and indica red, not sure which one I have at this point. It's all kind of grown all over the place. It is growing like mad, it's a jungle. It needs sorting, it's blocking all the light. Luckily I don't have any high energy demanding plants. So kind of got away with it, um, but yeah. Let's trim this back and let me show you what I'm going to do with this scape, how I trim it, how I maintain it. Yeah, they're doing absolutely amazing. That's what the tank is looking like on the side, guys. I mean, look at that. It is really overgrown. But it goes to show that, you know, what I'm using in this aquarium works and it works well. So in terms of fertilization, I'm using the FloraGrow Pro Special Fertilizer, which is dosed once a week according to the instructions, and then the FloraGrow Carbo CO2 Alternative, um, which again, I dose every day according to the manufacturer's instructions. And these two products are made by Colombo, and these are the results I'm getting with this scape using these products. So everything made by Colombo and Superfish um, is what I'm using in this gate to see what results I get. So the first thing I need to do is trim the plants. If you have lots of plants overgrowing, it really restricts the flow of the water within the water column, and we always need good flow in the aquarium, whether that's for a planted aquarium or a non-planted aquarium setup. All right then, so for this job, I'm gonna reach for my trusty UCAP stand. If you don't know what UCAPS is, it stands for the UK Aquatics Plant Society. If you're in the UK, or even if you're probably international, you might be able to join up to this uh, forum. Really useful. I've got such um, a good knowledge base from that forum, actually. I've only recently joined as well, and it's been really good. I wish I was a bit more active on it than um, I am, but it's great. So yeah, got my trusted UCAP stand here, ready to go. And two tools that I'm gonna use is mainly a pair of scissors, okay, to cut the stems, and then some tweezers just to pull the stems out. The other tool that I find really useful is a jug, which has a handle like this, a handle that you can hook onto the side of the aquarium, just so that when you're cutting plants, you can easily take the plants out of the aquarium and put them in a jug. And this jug is close by. So that's one thing that I love about this jug. It's a simple thing, but a uh, oversight really of making sure that you have a handle that can hook over the aquarium. So before I start doing the maintenance, I'll make sure I switch off the filter and the heater as well. Okay, so that is how the tank is looking after I've trimmed the plants. Oh my word, it's letting in so much more light. So I am going to trim, you know, these these uh, tops of the Rotala Rundidifolia. And what you do, you can trim it and then take a few centimeters of leaves off from the bottom because you don't want the you don't want to plant the leaves um, into the substrate. Okay, so you take a few leaves off where. You're gonna put from the you know a couple of centimeters from the bottom and then replant the tops. To make water changes in multiple tanks easy, I've got this Eheim submersible pump. I'll put a link of that pump in the description. I think you can get it off Amazon. And so it goes down here. Okay, and I keep all the plugs above the height of the tanks as well. Um, so it goes down here, 
into this reel. I have to kind of pull all of the reel out, unfortunately. And again, I need a better system. There's the reel, it goes down here. And I have a downstairs bathroom and it drains into here. Really just saves on lugging about buckets. So what I would ideally want to do is drain this water in the garden so I can, you know, feed all the plants with this nutrient rich um, aquarium water. And if you could do that, you know, recycle the water that you use in your aquariums to feed your plants, I highly recommend you do so. Always make sure you've got a bucket nearby so you can, you know, literally plonk the pump right in a bucket to collect all that dripping water. So this has been drained, this has been drained, that has been drained, and our bat has been drained. So you're looking roughly around about over 50% water change I do weekly. And you can do that easily when you're using a water submersible pump. Okay, so I'm gonna refill the tank up. The key thing now here is that when you use this kind of system, an adapter to put your hose on so you can fill straight from the tap, you get back pressure. I've got a mixer tap here that's really important and you get back pressure so you don't get a constant temperature. The way around this is what I found is run the hot water tap and make sure that runs to its maximum temperature. Once that's really hot, okay, at its maximum temperature, the hot water tap, just turn that flow down and that's going to be pure hot water coming out um, and then what I do is start running the cold so I start mixing in the cold and then get a thermometer okay aquarium thermometer and just measure that temperature and try and get that to you know 24 degrees or whatever temperature you use in your aquarium So once you've got your temperature out where you want it, I find that I put the hose directly onto this adapter instead of using one of these adapters. I just find I get a more constant temperature coming out of the tap into the aquarium or less fluctuation. So I'm just going to do that now. That obviously is a two-handed job. Okay, so I'm just giving you an example on this ADA 45P, but once you or filling up your tank straight from the tap, you need to make sure you add your dechlorinator straight away. So for me, I'm using a bit of Seachem Prime. So just take the necessary dose and add that straight into the aquarium. So now my water is coming in from the tap into that reel, out and into the aquarium. So I've just got this kind of outflow or inflow intake pipe that I bought you know from Amazon I think or from an aquarium shop just fitted with a strainer now although I have a tap here I don't want to switch that off when I come to fill the next aquarium because switching off that tap creates a back pressure and that will alternate the temperature of the water coming into the aquarium so let me just show you what I do to start filling up the next aquarium Honestly, the flow in this tank is completely changed now that I've trimmed all the plants. Now, you know, I'm getting to the water level that I want. So what I do now at this point, I can turn this bowl valve so that it stops the water from coming in. And now I can come here and just switch that off and basically pull that off like so. Okay, and we're done lift this out and then what I do is just let that rest on a bucket open that up 
I'll also put this in a bucket as well. When I reel all of this hosing back in, the water, any, any water that needs to come out of hosing goes in this bucket. If you're getting value from this video, then please make a comment, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on further content like this. And let me know in the comments if you're liking this type of content so that you can increase your knowledge base in aquascaping and know what to do to, you know, get a big, you know, good growth of your stem plants to make it really thick and bushy. Okay, so what I did is I threw away all the excess limnophilia. Um, and the other plants that I've trimmed, but I kept all of the, hold up, let me switch this light on. Rotala rundifolia or indica red. I'm not sure which one I have. I had both, but I don't know which one's kind of died off more and which one has kind of survived. I think the indica red is a bit more robust. Uh, I quite like that plant actually. All right then guys, so here is the aquascape when everything's been trimmed over there, all across there, looking quite bare. And I'm just going to show you what I've done with the Rotala Rundifolia that's been sticking in a separate tank for a couple of days while I've been prepping it. So let's just have a look at that. So there is the Rotala Rundifolia. Okay, and I'm just going to quickly show you what I've done when trimming this plant. All right, so what I do is when I trim the top, I get all these stems. Okay, and then you can see uh, here okay see this stem it's got some leaves at the bottom okay and what i do is basically i just take all the leaves off from the bottom so take that off okay take all that off and then you get something like this a stem without any leaves and that is about an inch of length okay and then you've got leaf then you can just plant that into the substrate you don't want any leaves at the bottom you know being planted in the substrate because that will rot and when you get rotting leaves, that's going to cause issues. Okay, so that's what I've done with all of these. Okay, literally, you know, separated them, you know, cut the tops and then, you know, took, took, took all these bits of leaves out. That's all of that. Now, that took, you know, about 45 minutes to do all of that. If you've got a big tank, so this is a 45 litre tank that I'm, I'm doing this. And if you've got a big tank, then, yeah, it'll take longer. So that is the disadvantage of trying to use this method chopping the tops and replanting the tops into the aquascape the bigger the tank the more stems you have the longer it will take so the plan is you know just to just to you know plant them as is and they'll, it'll all grow equally and then as the tank matures and i've done this process a few times meaning chop the tops and replant them a few times to get that big bushy growth that is when i will start you know shaping my trimmings as well that is when I'll start shaping the trimmings, when I get that thick bushy growth. And then I can take hopefully a nice shot of the scape and rescape it. So yeah, if we look at it all close up where I've done the trimmings, you can see that there aren't many plants in the substrate. However, it looked like at the top, we had really dense growth. I've got the limnophilia as well that would grow really quickly, really helps control that algae problem issues and the Rotala rundifolia, which is trimmed right back. You can see some of the, you know, kind of reddish stems there. Same on this side of the scape, you know, all the stems. You can see root growth as well, but all the stems have been chopped right back. I can see this kind of, you know, stem that's gone a bit dark and black and dying. Actually, I might chop that as well. Really important that, you know, anything that shows, uh, where are we, dead growth like this one, you trim it back. Okay, so, and that is after planting the tops. So that's the difference. I only, you know, trimmed the tops and replanted them um, with the Rotala Rundifolia. None of the other plants I did that with. Okay, so you don't see too much difference after planting the tops, but what I'm hoping is, you know, the background plants, the Limnophilia and the other one that I can't never pronounce properly, um, will grow, you know, quite faster than the Rotala Rundifolia. And the back plants will need another trim okay and i'll let the rotala run the folio grow then when i do my next trim 
big heavy trim plant the tops again on the rotala runa defolia only sorry and then on the third time that i need to do a trim i will then shape the plants as well and then you know obviously you need to trim the mosses the hydrocotyl tripartita here at the front and then this cape will start taking shape and start looking good and that's the thing about stem plants guys you gotta you know give them a few good cuts and let them become established before you start shaping them and getting that thick bushy growth all right then guys so that was me doing a maintenance session in my studio particularly focusing on this 45 centimeter uh, aquascapers aquarium produced by superfish and using the liquid ferts and the light that they've sent me as well hope you've really enjoyed this video and i will see you in the next one for now tarak